Andre Petrocek and David Luiz, are they 100% and available for selection? Uh, yeah, they are they're available for selection. I have made the, the comeback in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, to full fitness. Uh, David went, of course, to the national team. Pete made his return in between, so he was, uh, he was selected but not available for the national team because we felt he was still in that the last process of recovery. And uh, but they uh, they did extremely well this um, uh, since they uh, since everybody got together, which is uh, basically since yesterday, and uh, and they are able uh, to to be picked for selection. How relieved are you to have two world class players back in your defence, given the defensive fertilities that you yourself have admitted in, in the previous two games? No, I didn't. I didn't admit uh, defensive fragilities. I don't know where you come from. Uh, um, you said you weren't happy despite winning the games that you conceded goals and you said they have to be more alert. No, I, did, I didn't say nothing like that. I'm sorry. Um, I think, uh, I mean, the, the team has been uh, sensational throughout. Um, yeah, just, just a reminder that uh, we played seven games in preseason and only suffered one goal. So it would be stupid of me if I had suffered uh, a couple of goals to, to go on. Critiquing my, or criticizing my my defensive back four, which is not the case. Um, again, we use uh, what I told you was that we used most of our defensive weapons as attacking weapons. Uh, that's the, the objective that, that we want. We feel the organizing the team defensively uh, gives you more of the ball and and and, and, um, and turns you more uh, offensive. Um, and that's what we have been uh, focusing throughout since the beginning of the since the beginning of the season. Uh, anyhow, I mean, having everybody available is always is always a plus. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and unfortunately enough for Pete, uh, with the clash that we saw when he got injured, he, he is lucky to, to be with us so quickly. He made an extremely good recovery. Uh, fantastic work from from the medical staff. Uh, and David Luiz got injured, of course, as you remember, in the first 30 minutes where he, when he came back. Uh, got steadily progressing and, uh, and, and finally up for selection. First time we've seen you since the transfer window closed. Tell us uh, why you've brought in Raul Morales, what he can bring you and why you let Ben Ayun go. Um, I mean, we, we spoke about uh, in here that, that um, we wanted to, 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 to fill in a space in, uh, in midfield, to bring one more player in midfield. Yeah. Uh, of course, Yossi had that kind of um, variability. He could play in the middle and he could play uh, out in the channels or behind the striker. Um, but we felt that, we felt that uh, towards what we wanted to achieve in terms of playing style, um, Raul would, would fit with his uh, uh, requirements. Uh, again, let me remind you that um, Raul was elected uh, by the fans last year as, as, as the player of the season for Liverpool. So um, it was an extremely good deal for us, and we are very happy to, to have him here. Um, again, the market has closed, and, uh, and, and now we are focused, or more focused even, on the objective that we face for, uh, for the season. And, uh, and the, team, um, the team now is, uh, is together and, and focused on those objectives, so we're so pretty happy with what we've done. How frustrated are you, though, you did not get Modric or Alvaro Pereira? And why did those deals not happen? No, I mean... Uh, yeah. Again, uh, we, we've addressed it. Uh, we were very, very far from meeting Porto's demands regarding Alvaro, so uh, end of story. Uh, we are very, very happy with, uh, with Lashley and Ryan, plus the variability again that we have for that position with, uh, with Paulo Bosting, who can play on the left, uh, even David Luiz, who has done it before. Um, and, uh, and on the other hand, the Modric, we had, uh, we had, uh, we had left it out a couple of uh, uh, time ago. But because both players want to come and play for you, will you be back know. in January? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think the market is closed now and we have a good three months to focus on the real objectives and then when the window opens, it opens, but I won't speculate a lot with what is going to happen in January. Was it a disappointment not getting Luka Modric because it, it seemed that you went some length to try and get him? No, no. We're pretty happy with what we have. What about the start you made to the, the season? We spoke about the goals conceded. Uh, you've won two. I, I didn't mean, speak about the goals conceded, I'm sorry. Yeah, didn't speak about that. Uh, you've, won, you've won two and you've drawn one. Are you playing the football that, that you want or is, can, it, can it be better? No, I think it can be better. And our objective is to transform it uh, better. I think uh, 
in a football team, perfection is very, very difficult to obtain, and you won't obtain it uh, not this season, not the season after, and, and, and so and so on and so forth. Um, I think uh, we have to improve on a, on a weekly basis, on a, from game to game basis, uh, and we want to improve from what we have done before. I think it's pretty, pretty logic, and I think it's what people expect from us. Uh, is to get um, fluency in the way we play. Uh, again, I mean, I'm very happy that we have been creating enough chances to win games, and uh, and this is a good sign for us, and this is what we have to focus on. Uh, uh, again, we need, we just need to to, to improve on, on the quality and fluency of the game, which again, as I spoke to you, in the end of the Norwich game, I think it comes also by playing more games and more often, not by having the the weekly break that we were having uh, since the beginning of the season. So uh, so let's see what kind of responses that we have now. Also because uh, I think there's a change in, in focus and in concentration when the market closes because it's it's, it's normal and it happens to anything. It distracts the players too. Not that, not that it distracts, but it absorbs uh, everything in, in what's related to the football business. So I think it's normal. Has anything surprised you at all in the opening month of the Premier League season as a manager? No, not really. Perfect. Yeah. You say you're happy with the amount of chances created. What about your, your your scoring level at the moment then? Because United have scored 13 in three games, City have scored 12, yeah. you've got five. No, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's good for them. I mean, they have gone on to um, to score a lot of goals, and it's it's uh, it's good for for, for British football. Uh, it's just, we just hope to score one more goal than the opponent. That's our. That's our objective. What do you think of United beating Arsenal 8-3? 8-2. 8-2, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, listen, I think it's, uh, it's, it's not one, one common result. It's a result that uh, that uh, doesn't happen a lot. Uh, I mean, Man United played the, the world to perfection and, and, uh, and managed to score a lot. I, I, can't, I can make no further comments than that. I mean, they are uh, with Man City leading the table for uh, for the Barclays Premiership, and, uh, and at the moment we have two points behind them. We want to to, to grab them and, and, and get nearer to them. Uh, so uh, our objective is only is on shortening distance and not uh, not what the others do in terms of performance. We have to focus on our own performance. When Torres was scoring loads of goals at Liverpool, he had a Spanish manager and a Spanish players around him. He felt very comfortable. Do you feel the arrival of Juan Mata here and, and Romero can help him in some way as well? No, I mean, um, I think in, in this Premier League you have different kinds of, uh, of, of dressing rooms with different nationalities. I don't think it affects that, that kind. I mean, uh, or to that extent that uh, it affects or uh, you can benefit or not from performance. By that situation, I mean it's uh, it's people it's people that obviously uh, Fernando knows and knows from going to the national team with uh, with uh, with Mata. But uh, I mean it's uh, I don't know it's just friends, uh, social behaviors outside the pitch. There's nothing. It's, it's things that uh, are not related to football performance in in the pitch. So I, I wouldn't say that he would benefit or not from that situation. Help him relax, more comfortable. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Were you surprised that Frank was left out to the, um, the first England side for the qualifier against Bulgaria? No, I have nothing to do with that. I mean, it's, um, it's Capello's choices and I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position to comment uh, another manager's choices. Do you still think he's got a, a big internet, international future? I think so. I mean, this is one of the top players in, uh, in, in England and in the Premiership. Uh, I would say so. And, and uh, you saw through Frank's uh, um, interview, that uh, interview or uh, just his speech. Uh, that he, yeah, an interview after the game that, that, that he made himself available and, uh, and he wants to keep performing uh, club-wise to be performing for the national team after to, to, to the top level. I think he has this kind of a challenge to, uh, to, to himself and I think all the top players have it and I think he's, uh, he's up there too, as a player with the best. I think what you've seen from the Premier League so far, how many, how many teams do you think can actually win the title? Four? Is it? Six. Well, I don't know. I mean, we've, we've discussed this before in this uh, in this press conferences. I think uh, there's five teams challenging for the title. I, mean, uh, I wouldn't be um, I cannot be stupid enough to leave the Tottenham out of these teams because they've made fantastic run throughout, and uh, it's not impossible that he can join this group of Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, Man United, and Chelsea up to to, to the title challenge. I mean. 
you never know what's going to happen in uh, in, uh, in football, and surprises might might happen. But um, I mean, we've we've addressed these teams by the way that they've been moving in the market, and what by the way they've been performing in this beginning of the season. Uh, Arsenal, of course, with not yet the results that they wanted, but uh, still a top team that can invert things, as you know, as they inverted last year to to make that run that pushed Man United till things changed for Chelsea to push Man United in the end. You saw a lot of David Luiz when you were at Porto when he was playing for Benfica. With the sort of world-class defenders who have either retired, Cannavaro, or coming to the end of their careers, uh, uh, you know, these sort of types of players, do you feel he's as good as there is in the world at the moment, David Luiz, centre-half? I think he's a good central defender. I mean, that's why he has joined us from, uh, from, from Benfica, and that's why we played, we played a lot of money for him to come across. Um, he's of course Brazilian international, and he competes with uh, with Lucio, Thiago Silva, and uh, and uh, and the top the top level of uh, of, uh, of Brazil stand. And he competes again with with top level in uh, in Chelsea with Alex JT and uh, Ivanovic. So I mean, it, it, it's um, it's it's very very good competition in between the four, and the four of them are very very good. That's that's what I that's what I think about about. The, what this this possibly happened. Andre, just on, on Frank Lampard, have you been surprised about the level of criticism that he's had for being such a big player for England for so long? Is that something from your experience that's worse in England that we judge our national team perhaps harshly than no, but it's, I don't know. I have nothing to I'm not in a position to, to critique managers' choices and I'm not in a position to critique Whatever you write, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you have to respond to people's expectations or public expectations, and it's not me, the, the manager of Chelsea, to, to decide on what you write. If you write it, you write it. I cannot say nothing about it. I just have to respect on, on, on what you write or, uh, or disagree, which, uh, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position to, 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 to say to you what, uh, what you do. Have you spoke to him about it since you came back? Not, not regarding that situation. I think it's nothing to do with the uh, women. Um, any more injuries? Yeah, no, well, the DA still has, uh, he might, for a bit of an in-between, I mean, he has to be authorised medically to, uh, to make his full return to training. Uh, he has been doing light sessions, of course, in, in, in the gym with, with our physios. Uh, I mean, let's um, let's push it to the limit to try for him to be available for Man United. Uh, I wouldn't say that he would be available for the uh, for So out this weekend and, and Labour Tuesday? Yes, yeah. at the moment. Anybody else? No. Um, and Torres wasn't on the bench even for Spain. Yeah, but it's the same. It's the same. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't fool the other managers to tell them why, what are you doing or whatever. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Um, I think all of them, when they go back to national team, they push to be selected and they push to be the best. They are already the best because they are representing the national team, and they, they just have to compete with the best. And uh, and end of story. They, they could even be the best on that environment, but still the manager has to make a choices on on whoever he feels best for the team. So. That's uh, what I think Capello did, and what, that's what Dalbos did, and that's what everybody does. You were here when Shevchenko didn't quite work out. There must be a chance that this might not work out as well. I don't know, really. I, mean, I, agree. I think uh, Sheva went uh, through a fantastic period of trophies also in, in Chelsea, and we cannot, uh, we cannot forget that. And, uh, and he's part of the history of, uh, of this club as well. So. Uh, and he has to compete. And he has to compete with uh, with Didier and Elka by that time, and I think with uh, one more that I cannot recall. But that's the um, that's the reality. I mean, all of them are part of the history of the club, and all of them were successful here. Maybe not as successful as when he was in uh, in, uh, in AC Milan in terms of European titles, but uh, successful in uh, domestically. Um, so. The story that I think Fernando is here to be successful domestically and international, and that's what we have to that's what we have to face and what we have to promote. Just to, to one of our main focuses, I think, is, is getting the best out of the players, and we we try to uh, to free themselves to exploit their talent, and we hope to do it with with all of them. Just with Pereira, there was some talk that it didn't work you getting him because 
Porto wanted to have some revenge for you coming yeah, here. Is that was that in, in, in the discussion? Know, which, uh, whatever. We, we couldn't miss the, the we, we couldn't match the price that people were asking about it and and again I made it public to you that that we had made an offer for him and uh, and uh, that we were too far apart regarding uh, what they wanted for him and end of story we we went for him we missed it but we are happy with uh, with uh, with Ryan and I think it's it's fair I mean. Uh, uh, Patrick, of course, went to to Wigan, and he was making a steady uh, progression as well. And uh, and again, I th- maybe it was a wise decision in the end. Can I ask one more about Didier? How is he in himself? Was he, was he a bit shaken by it? Was quite a bad. Yeah, I mean, the, the the first days were uh, were of uh, of course tr- tremendous uh, pain and. Uh, and uh, of course, he had, uh, he, had, uh, he had his family supporting him. Uh, he had complete support from the medical staff who were with him 24-7. And, um, and, uh, and we've been getting this support to him uh, out. Then we just have to, to make sure that he is fully recovered before he, uh, before he comes back to, to training. Because that's the, um, the requirements that you have to do uh, neurologically. Does he have to be right mentally as well when he steps back on the team? Yeah, yeah. Is he, is he at the moment, do you think, or has he got a bit? No, not yet. Not yet. How not close yet. is he to his contract? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, dis- not discussing it at the moment. Cool. Yeah, uh, David Sturridge returns from suspension. Uh, how big a part will he play at the weekend? Um, he's been, Sturridge never um, stopped training very, very well since, uh, since, of course, we started the season and since the last game against the Rangers where he scored twice. He's very, very competitive in training. Uh, I mean, all of you guys saw the part he could play, not only in our preseason, but also in Bolton last year. So uh, it's, uh, I think it's again, it's a plus that, that he is on for, uh, for selection and he can add to the team as well.